For sure. So, you know, when we look at building a toolkit and how to really take advantage of, uh, of creating this, this kit that is going to help you manage your state, it's really important that you understand where it is you want to go. And I always start out uh, the consultation with, you know, if you could change or enhance three things in your life, what would they be? And the reason that I ask you that question is so that I can really start to know what kind of a tool is going to help you. And, you know, sometimes it's really interesting because when I do my consultations, sometimes what people are asking for isn't what they need. And, you know, I'm, I feel so blessed to be working with an incredible team that goes, yeah, no, 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 no. This is what they need, you know. Talk about the heart, or talk about this. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'll say, well, you know, let's talk about your heart, and then they start crying, right? And so then I know that the guides are very specific about what they want that person to do, or what they need in their toolkit at this time. And so sometimes when you come to see me, you can ask for a very specific tool, and I'll go, no. That's not what you need. The guides are talking about this. Talk to me about this. And then, you know, that's when the magic really happens. And sometimes it really is about what, what you come with your wish list and say, I need a stone that's all about focus, and I need a stone that's all about, you know, confidence. Uh, based on your frequency is really, really going to determine where we need to hone, you know. If you're a wind, then you really need help with confidence. I mean, you know, even though you may have lived a long life and you've worked on that for many, many, many years and you're better than you were when you were five, but sometimes it's really nice to be able to just put that stone on when you have to go out to an event, you know, or go with your husband to something and you're feeling like, oh my God, I don't want to go because I feel so, I'm, you know, not confident. I feel like I'm not, you know, I don't feel good. I don't, I don't know how to talk to people or whatever it is, right? Or if you're talking to a school teacher who's a wind or an accountant who's a wind and, you know, it's the month end and they're all scattered all over the place and they got to do something. They got to do it today. <laughs> right and finish it today and then the grounding stone comes in right and i was really i'm i feel again so fortunate because i do work with a team that is very focused on helping me do this work and they basically say okay do this you know midnight mystic was born um at the request of a wind i you know i need a stone that's going to help me ground and i'm looking at them and going oh my goodness how are we going to ground this wind person like this resonating way up here well, we ground them with platinum energy. Platinum and black, we mix it. It's amazing, because it, what it does keeps the frequency really high, but grounds, mm -hmm. keeps you focused without reducing frequency, because as soon as you start to reduce frequency, you get anxiety, right? So I wanted to talk about some specific stones, and it's, it's uh, you know, this is a stone that was two years in the making. You know, it took us two years to birth this stone. Which was and it's called Peacock Mystic Quartz. Mm -hmm. And the Peacock Mystic Quartz actually started out with, um, as you know, we gold plate a lot of our, our jewelry. And uh, the gold plate stuck to the back of the stone, a mystic stone. And it completely changed the color. And I went to my alchemist and I went, Look at the stone. We need to make this. It's peacock mystic. And he went, oh, Ooh. you know, these guys are, are real scientists and they're working with oxides and, you know, precious metals and titanium and then looking at it and they're going, no, that's impossible. Can't do it. Can't do it. It won't work. And I'm like, yeah. You can do it. I know you can do it. I'm like a cheering quad and I, I you know, get really excited and they get really excited when I get excited. And so, you know, we worked on this for two years and we did hundreds of, of samples, you know. You bring the sample and you say, what do you think of this? And I say, well, you know, we're missing the turquoise array. We can't do that because it's, you know, this is what it needs to look like. And, and he'd go, well, they tried to actually do the gold bonding on the back and it didn't work at all. And so it was, it was an ongoing process and then they brought it to me and I was just like oh. and if when you hold this stone 
it is like on steroids. It's just a frequency dynamite machine. So the peacock is an interesting creature. It is very noble and it actually resonates to Lakshmi. In India, they say that the peacock carries the energy of the goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the goddess of loving devotion. She's all about success and abundance and joy and, um, you know, belief. she's like a cheering, cheering squad, right? And she brings the most auspicious of energies forward. When I started to do the research on the peacock, because I knew it was peacock, and when, it, when I met it, I knew it was peacock. And so, and the peacock is also related to the phoenix, which is all about rebirth, transformation, uh, really stepping into your highest path. It's like when the, when the caterpillar goes from the caterpillar to the butterfly. It's really about that kind of energy. It's about stepping into your highest the, you know, your path where, where you're going to blossom. And it really is about the nobility of your own soul. When you activate your rainbow light body, so the interesting thing about us as human beings is that we have this physical body that we relate to as being a, a us. But our rainbow light body is really where the, the spirit resides most of the time, and that's where we get our yummy stuff, right? That's where we are completely connected to spirit, and that's where, where we are, you know, totally revitalized. When the chakras are closed, it literally makes us feel like we are completely disconnected from ourself, from spirit, and from the network, our network, our, our, our sacred grid, right? Because we're all connected, right? And so... When we activate that rainbow light body and we open all the chakras, it's like living in complete bliss because everything is nurturing us. Everything is connected to spirit. Everything is, um, we believe in ourselves 150%. We know we can do this thing called life. And when negative things happen, instead of going, oh my God, this is like horrible, we go, no problem, I got this, right? We just keep going. And so it is one of the most powerful materials that I've ever worked with. And I'm so thrilled to, to bring it forward for everyone to uh, meet and greet and, 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 and enjoy. It's amazing. Um, one of the things that Steve asked me to talk about was the alchemy process of making mystic stones. The mystic quartz is, what they do is they take oxides from many, many different gemstones. So they grind up the gem material and they, they basically pulverize the material to be almost like a liquid. And then what they do is they spray it onto the back of clear quartz. And because the, the, the material is almost identical to the formation of the quartz, it's like pouring a glass of water in the ocean. So what it does is it actually mingles with the stone. And then what they do is they coat it with titanium. And titanium is the galactic metal. It resonates 44 on the periodic table, which is the energetic of the galactic warrior. And so it's an amplifier. And what it does is it amplifies the frequency of the gem. And so you get this material that is, first of all, amplifier with oxides and titanium. And it's literally a powerhouse. If any of you have heard of um, James Tiburon, James Tiburon was a scientist. He was actually an engineer that was traveling around the world, and all of a sudden, Metatron decided he was going to use, Meta use Tiburon as his, his vehicle, and he started to channel Metatron. And for a scientist, this is a little bit of a challenge, right? Because it's, they can't really understand it, right? But he agreed, and he became the channel for Metatron. And he has a whole article on uh, gemstones using titanium in the time of Atlantis and Lemuria. And when I read about that, it was after I had, had um, worked with the, the uh, and had the, the mystic collection in, the, in our collection for many, many years. And I read this and I was like, oh my God. Oh, 
<laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the mystic stones are really an amplification and they are very, very specific and very, very powerful tools. Um, I work with the people that have the, the patent on this process because I know that it's permanent. There's a lot of uh, people that try to knock off this process in China and in India, but it's not permanent. It wears off after about a year. These are um, stones that are designed to be, you know, last for hundreds of years. So, you know, they are, they are permanent. Um, uh, so, when we talk about the Angel Aura, and this is an amazing stone, it's Angel Aura uh, Enlightenment, and it has one of the purest forms of the violet ray that we work with. And this is made with precious metals. So they use gold and platinum, and they bond it onto the surface of the stone in a green process, and you know we get this amazing tool. Angel Aura, and it is one of the most important stones for opposing elements because what it does is it brings you into deep peace and very, very loving. This is a, a very important tool. So th that would be one of what I would call a pillar stone or cornerstone. Um, is that violet? It's a violet ray, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful. That's incredible. It's a shapeshifter stone. So say, for example, you put it on skin it's a different color. Hmm. I'm getting hot. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, really hot, right? Yeah, it's Amazing. it's a very, very high resonance, huh. but very loving and very nurturing and very calm. Oh, and all yeah. about plugging in. So the other stone I wanted to talk to you about <coughs> is uh, Parvati so Pink. So one of the things that mm. happened this season was some very, very powerful tools came forward because we're entering a time where it becomes more and more important for us to have real power tools. Like it's kind of like going from um, a drill, from a, from a hand, like, you know, screwdriver to a power drill. Um, and this is called Parvati Pink Sapphire. So I didn't think I would ever add to the sapphire collection because I really felt like it was complete. We had the Shasta pink sapphire and then I added the imperial pink, which did a completely different job. But the Parvati pink is one of the most empowering stones that uh, I, I feel is in the collection. Um, one of the things that I found when I was working with clients was that a lot of us feel like we we love ourselves, but we don't feel like we have all of the abilities to be able to shift gears. So what I'm talking about is I'm talking about going from the soft, loving mother to the warrior princess, and yet still carrying the energy of love. Because as we are moving into these very, very challenging times, there are times when we need to be a warrior, but we need to be a warrior with loving kindness, right? It's not about being a slam me on the ground and this breed me the riot act warrior. It's a, a you know, loving, nurturing, I accept you, you are a beautiful person, even though maybe I don't agree with you. Um, and, you know, this is my perspective, you know, let me hear about your perspective and let's together Let's go, you know, we can agree to disagree, but we can still be loving and kind towards one another, right? And so the Parvati pink is really about being the warrior and the very soft, loving, nurturing mother energy, or being, um, you know, uh, activating the root and being really grounded and really solid. It's about confidence. One of the biggest things today that I think everyone needs more of is confidence. Confidence that everything's going to be okay. Confidence that you can do this thing called life. Confidence that, you know what, you are going to have the right people in your life at the right time in order to feel nurtured. And, you know, really moving forward on your path and knowing it's the right path for you. So that's what this stone is all about. It's about knowing the inner knowing, and when you know, that's what you're going to attract, right? Talked about tonight was how important managing our state is for attracting 
what we really, really want. You know, so many times um, we have the chatter in our brain, right? And it's saying, uh, it's saying all this stuff to us, right? And it's not always good stuff, right? For example, someone phones you up and they start giving you shit, right? And it's somebody you really care about, right? And they start saying all this stuff to you and you're like, oh. And then you get off the phone and you go, oh my God, maybe they don't love me anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? <laughs> or, maybe, or, or, you know, I wonder what I said, what could I have done differently? Like we go through this whole emotional thing and really, it just means that maybe they're having a rough day, right? So it's so very, very important that, you know, we stay within our own framework so we can help them, right? And so that we can really work together to achieve the highest outcome. And so our own self-talk becomes very, very important. When we're in a low vibration, for example, Say you have, um, you know, you've been a little bit depressed, you've been a little bit down, things haven't been going your way, you know, all of a sudden you get a bill, like I had a bill for my condo, I was telling, I was telling Stephen Elizabeth, I got a bill for my condo for $25,000. Whoa. And I'm like, isn't there a condo fund? <laughs> They're like, yeah, there's a condo fund, but it doesn't cover it. I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, so all of a sudden you get that news yeah. and then all of a sudden you know your your parent phones you and they say they're not doing well and then all of a sudden maybe your animal starts getting sick and it's just like coming at you from all directions and it's just like oh my god you start battening down the hatches right what's going to happen next right and so one of the things that's really important that we have a tool that allows us to shake it off right yeah. shake it off and know it's going to be okay so one of the things that I always talk about with money is when I did the research on being a star children, child, everything that I read was pointing me to the belief system that we are, when we agree to come down here, we agree that we can also have, live in complete abundance. And that means, you know, having all the things that you want, things are not bad. You know, society sometimes conditions us to say oh well if you drive this kind of a car you're not a good person because you know you shouldn't be driving such an expensive car or you shouldn't be doing this right or if you live in a big house you must be you know doing something you know that's not good because it's too big a house what do two people need a house that big for <laughs> right and so then it makes you feel guilty it's like, oh, well, I don't want to buy a big house because then everybody's going to think I'm not a good person, right? <laughs> or whatever. I mean, it's all our conditioning. And what I really believe is that as star children, we are entitled to be able to, I mean, we agree to come to this crazy freaking place. And so we agree that we can live in abundance if we yes. believe that we deserve that, right? So when I got the $25,000 bill, <laughs> I went, oh, that's so awesome. Because if I've got $25,000 going out, I've got 10 times that amount coming back. Because according to the law of the universe, whatever I put out always comes back tenfold. I mean, it's the law. And so I was like, oh, this is really great. I don't know where I'm going to get the money from, but this is awesome, right? And so it really is your belief system. Because if you believe that, then that's what's going to happen. If you believe like, oh my God, I just got a $25,000 bill, I'm never going to be able to pay this, and I'm never, ever going to recover. This is going to affect me for the rest of my life, right? Well, that is a, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So one of the things that I think is really important today is the golden ray, the stones with the golden ray. The golden ray activates Jupiter. So we're talking about the planet of success, abundance, joy, health, wishes coming true all around you. And so I wanted barrel. to talk a little bit, yeah, golden, golden barrel. barrel. Uh, one, I wanted to talk about some of the stones that emanate the golden ray because it is so important right now. It's also the ray of the Christ consciousness. So this one is a ray of enlighten, enlightenment. So these are both citrine. We don't use treated citrine. Um, although, you know, I have in the past, <clears throat> treated citrine, what they do is they heat amethyst and it turns into a, a 
dark gold in color. When you have the darker gold in color, it's just more grounding. It's a little bit lower frequency. So this material comes from the south of Brazil, and believe it or not, even though quartz is the most abundant mineral on our planet, natural citrine is becoming very rare. And so this is coming from the south of Brazil, and um, it's a beautiful material, extremely powerful. Now you have to be harmonized to wear fire to wear this. Then we have, uh, we have a champagne citrine. So this is a, a very, very high frequency, also gold and ray. Uh, very, very um, light vibration compared to the, to the more cognac color. Very, very powerful. It also activates all the etheric chakras. Just holding it, I'm like buzzing right now. <laughs> um, and then we have the barrel. So the people that can't wear citrine, and also people that can, barrel is one of the barrel. most, oh, I love barrel. It's called Heliodor. I wanted to have it in the collection for many, many years and could never uh, find material that was reasonable enough to make it affordable. It's usually a, it's a precious stone. And so it's usually, um, you know, an investment stone. Um, I talked to my cutter about it and he was able to source us some material that is amazing. And, you know, it's a very reasonable price. Golden Barrel is a stone that's all about nurturing the nurturer. You know, some of us are here and our job is really about giving, nurturing and giving. And so we're constantly in that flow of giving and nurturing, right? But then what ends up happening is we end up feeling a little bit drained. This is a stone that nurtures the nurturer. And it's an incredible stone that activates Jupiter, success, abundance, joy, and health. And it also is a stone, it's an I can do it stone. So it makes you believe in yourself. It's all about confidence and dynamic energy and, and flow. And it's, I love it. I'm wearing it. No, I'm not wearing it. I was wearing it <laughs> earlier today. I changed. <laughs> I changed. How many different kinds of barrel are there? There are several. So um, there's Morganite as a barrel. Mm -hmm. Aquamarine is a barrel. Heliodor or Golden Barrel is a barrel. Um, red Barrel. Red Barrel, of course, Bix Bite. And Bix Bite is one of my favorites because it is like a little powerhouse. Uh, Bix Bite, anything else? Chrysa um, Barrel is not really a barrel. It is Chrysa Barrel. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would have chosen another. Yeah, exactly. I would have too. Um, so those are the barrel. They're precious stones, and you know I'm so grateful to be able to integrate them into um, the collection and have them for you because they are stones that are amazing. They are powerhouses. Yes. We're just getting lower on time, and I yeah. know somebody earlier asked a question about yeah. how do you know which stone to use when, and yes, that, yes, yes. That yes, for sure. Um, so one of the things that is really, really important when you're working with your stones, and I actually brought my toolkit so that I could talk about this a little bit more. Um, this is this is my kit for today, okay, um, and. I've talked about how important it is to carry a few stones with you throughout the day because you never know what you're up against, right? And I started out the day in my barrel and I wanted to wear this stone because I was a little bit tired from traveling. I wanted to really focus and get a lot of stuff done and I wanted to feel really energized for tonight. And then I was so amped up by the end of the day. I was like, oh, I think I need to like calm down a little bit. So I, I put on my Alexandrite so that I could be more calm, but also connected to the guides and spirit so that I would be able to, you know, connect with them and understand the information that I needed to give to you today. Um, so I put on my Alexandrite. Um, but I also have my Citrine and I have my Imperial Pink Sapphire. So, you know, those would be the stones that I had to choose from today. Now, 
obviously I know the personality of each of these stones. So each stone has a personality. And so some stones are all about grounding and focus. They're very kind of matter of fact. Some stones are very bubbly and kind of they're like, ooh, let's go play. And so they make you feel really happy. Some stones are anti-stress, really, really good. Like cornerstone piece, again, talking about the pillars. Um, Spinel is a stone that I think everyone should have in their toolkit because we are all dealing with stress. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, we all deal with stress. And this is the ultimate anti-stress stone. That's a beauty. It's a beauty. Wow. It's, it's such a great stone. Um, it's very rare in the jewelry trade because it's expensive when it comes out of Mother Earth. This is one of our lab-grown bioidentical stones. And what it does, it goes through the body like a scanner, opening and activating all the chakras and meridians. And it's very, very good for healing. Um, you know, it's, anytime you have blockages, it makes it difficult to move the energy and the body is what heals itself, right? So this is a really great one for opening and activating all the chakras and meridians. And it also is a stone that replaces stress with happiness. And it also helps us understand what we're here to do. So it's a really, really great stone uh, for everyone. And, it, you know, this is a stone that I use all the time. And um, what's great it called again? Stone. Yeah. Blue green spinel. Okay. Is it only blue? Are there more than one spinel? There are. There is actually three spinels, and they all do similar work. Uh -huh. The Pariba is all about freedom. It's got a really kind of a bubbly, kind of outgoing um, feeling. And then the Atlantean is all about personal power. So it's a really great stone for stepping into your own personal power. Um, that's the stone that I use for people that maybe are not sure about what they want to do or, uh, but if you have an illness or if you're working on wellness, this is the stone that I recommend. But they, they all do very similar work. Um, spinels are amazing. So one of the things that I encourage you to do with your own toolkit is, and we were talking about different ways that we can achieve this, right? Because what ends up happening is you leave the appointment and you know, right away as soon as you leave the appointment, you forget the name. It's like dating a boy and you don't know his name. And it's like, yeah, hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> What's, and you can meet somebody and you want to introduce them, right? Somebody says, oh, well, who is this? And you say, well, uh, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> you know, and the same thing happens with the stones. It's like somebody says, oh, I love your stone. What is it? And it's like, uh. <laughs> I can't quite remember his name. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> you know, so one of the things I think is really important is to, um, and I do this all the time for clients, is on a little plastic uh, case, I just write the name of the stone. And every time you put it on, look at the name. And, uh, you know, you can also photocopy the description and, you know, tape it on the back of your bag so you know what it does. A lot of times there's highlights, like I'll, I'll have like a short name for a stone. Like for example, Moldavite is the galactic connector that's grounding and shielding. Um, you know, the Alexandrite is the holy grail of spiritual development. Um, you know, each stone kind of has a little bit of a, of a short name so you can know what it does. The other thing I think that's really important is to listen to the stone. Because if a stone is screaming at you, okay, you open up your kit and that stone is screaming at you, you need to either wear it, even if it doesn't match your outfit, because stones go with everything, right? And, and you know, you can hide it or whatever feels right, right? Because you don't necessarily always need to show your stone. Your stone is really for you, it's 95% tool and 5% beautiful jewelry, right? It has to be beautiful for me because I'm a designer, right? I want it to be beautiful. And there's a lot of care and attention that goes into the cuts. You know, most of our cuts are our signature cuts. And so those, I designed those cuts based on sacred geometry. And so they, they are doing a, a function in the way that they're cut. You know, some stones move like this, mm -hmm. some stones move like this, some stones encapsulate you, some stones are load and cradle. Each cut 
does a very different job. And you'll feel that as we try the stones on you, you'll go, oh my God, this is way different than the last one. They're exactly the same. How can that be, right? Because remember, what you're doing is you're funneling energy in different ways. Some of them are all about funneling to you. Some of them are all about broadcasting out. So depending on who you are and what you're doing, you're going to need a different cut. You know, um, The yin-yang cut is a very powerful cut that's all about balancing opposites and so can be very useful. Um, so listening to your toolkit is very, very important. And carrying more than one tool is very important. You know, like for example, I was, oh, I'm supposed to wind it up. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that, that I feel is, is important is that you need to have a few tools in one day. Like I, I left the, the house with five pieces and I wore three. So, and I was able to move through some, you know, I got, I got worked up because I was doing a lot of different things and I was, you know, moving through a lot of different, um, switching gears a lot, like working with the jewelry, then working with clients and, you know, working with my assistant and, you know, I needed to change gears, but I got so amped up from doing that, I needed to calm down. And so, you know, I put on my Alexandrite and then I'm, th I'm there. I don't have to worry about it, right? And then also, you know, the Imperial Pink is, is a stone that I wear a lot when I'm traveling because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel like supported by the universe and loved and it stimulates the intellect, so I feel really good. I hope I answered all your questions. Yes, Just, just a quickie. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the stones that you can combine, like some of the amplifying stones? Yes, yes, yes. So layering is something that almost everybody does. And the reason why layering is so effective is because sometimes you want more than one type of energetic. For example, you want to be grounded and confident. Or you want to be focused but also driven. You want to be, um, maybe you're procrastinating at doing something. So you want something that's an anti-procrastinator but you also want something you're not feeling that well. So you've got a stone that's making you feel better. So that's when layering comes in. The most important thing with layering is you always want to wear the stones on different chains. Because if you try and put two stones on one chain, it's like twin, twins in a, in a little tiny single bed. They're, they're always fighting for space, right? Now this is my cover, now this is my cover. So you want to wear them on different chains. Or a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just tuck one stone inside my bra and do it that way. Putting it in the pocket doesn't work. It's got to be over the chakras. Okay, remember the chakras are like a funnel. So you can wear it inside a bra and it will still work. Or in a pocket, if you've got a pocket, you can do that. Um, so some of the amplifiers, if you look at the amplifying stones, dandrite, phenakite, diamond, simulant, white sapphire, um, moissanite is amazing. Um, and a lot of the angel auras are amplifiers. Um, a lot of the, the mystics can be used as amplifiers because of the titanium that supercharges the stone. As long as they are not doing opposing jobs, you can layer almost everything. So what I'm talking about is having a stone that is um, calming, like an angel aura, and a paparaccia, you know. You want to you want to speed and yet have the break on all the time. It just doesn't work. So you're basically telling the body to resonate at two completely opposing vibrations. It's like yeah, I want you to go fast but go slow. <laughs> it doesn't work. So um, you know, layering is is really really great. So all of the all of the clear stones are amplifiers. They can be used to amplify the gem material. Um, another amplifier that's amazing is rutilated quartz. Rutilated quartz, you put on that rutilated quartz, it's going to amplify and amp up any other stone you put it with. Remember, the stones are all friends, like they live in a community. And so they're all interconnected and they love each other. That's why I think it's so important that when you store your gems, that you store them as a community. Don't put one stone over here and one stone over here. They generally don't like that. If, they're, if they like to be together and they feed one another. So it's, it's important. The other thing, quickly, 
five minutes. I, I just oh yeah. Heads up. Okay. So the other thing that's really, really, really important. I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I had a guy, really, really lovely man, uh, very, very successful, has a very busy business, and uh, going through a horrific divorce. Horrific. Um, two young children that basically, you know, were feeling like they needed to choose sides. Uh, you know, one of them refusing to see him, the other one seeing him, but in a really, really distraught state. Um, you know, he was very financially successful. So, you know, it was a nasty, nasty, nasty divorce, nasty journey. Going through a lot of discoveries, a lot of court, a lot of nastiness. And um, definitely not a conscious uncoupling, okay? It was like a nasty. And so he came to see me and he got a, 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 a black tourmaline in quartz and perfect stone. It was just, when he put it on, it just was perfect for him and he loved it. Well, somewhere along the way, he forgot about the cleaning and charging. <laughs> and he wore the stone for two months. He put it on one day and the stone literally exploded. <coughs> wow. Whoa. And literally he put it on like this and the stone went like this. Yeah. Then he brings it to me and all it shattered, right? And I'm like, oh, what happened? <laughs> and he said, well, I don't know. He says, I don't know what happened. It didn't fall on the ground. I just put it on my body and it just exploded. And I'm like, okay, well, did you clean it? He said, clean? What do you mean? I, I said, well, you know the, the cleaning and charging toolkit that you got? He said, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> and so what ends up happening, a stone, the stone is doing a job, right? And we had a lady on Facebook, she weighed her stone in the morning, and again after work, it was two grams heavier when she got home at the end of the day. Just give me one second. <laughs> um, and so what ends up happening is the stone is, first of all, pulling all the stuff out of the body it's protecting you against the stuff that's coming at you, and it's all being stored inside the stone. When you take it home at night and you place it on the cleaning and charging stone, this vacuums out your stone and this recharges it. And so what you're doing is you're letting that stone, take, you're taking out the garbage, if you will. Now, if you don't take out the garbage, it's kind of like using your compactor and using your compactor over and over and over and over again and never ever taking out the stuff that's been compacted. Eventually, the container is going to explode, right? And so it is imperative that you clean and charge your stone every single day. It's like your telephone. It doesn't run on empty. It just doesn't work that way. And so energetically, you've got to clean and charge. You don't have to ever open this up. Imagine this is permanently sealed, okay? And then all you do is you just put one stone on top of the, the cleaning and charging kit, or in the case of what I do, is I have my cleaning and charging kit inside my pouch, and so they're, whenever they are in bed, they're being cleaned and charged, and they're with all their buddies. It doesn't have to actually be right no. next. We don't actually like you to put it right on the stone because it's hard on the metal. But I mean right against the plastic. No, so no. Just Remember it's it. resonance, okay. right? So it's kind of like when you've got a bowl and you're making a cake and you've got a big, big mixer bowl like this and you've got your little beater in the center. You don't have to put your ingredients touching the beater. It's moving the energy, right? So as long as it's, you know, in the same vicinity, it's going to do the job. Yeah. Was there a time when those charging stones were fatter? Yes. And so it doesn't have to be that way? No. Two small, thin ones in a plastic bag? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. The fatter one, you can do a faster cleaning and charging. So, you know, this is going to clean and charge faster than this one. Because it's a bigger stone, bigger stone, bigger vibration. So nobody ever gave me one of those when I bought all my pieces. I never got one. But I do have a, a sprig of sol solenite. Yeah. And I use that every yeah. night. They yeah. just lay on there in a little row. Yeah. Is it bad to uh, put them under water, too, to, like, and Some of the things drain. that I 
recommend you do not use mm -hmm. is salt. Okay. Never no. use salt. No. It's like a stripper. So it's like washing your wood floor with a stripper. Yeah. Okay. okay. With like a varnish stripper. Sure. Okay. It takes everything out. All the good, all the yummy stuff, it takes that out too. Oh. So um, no salt. Um, uh, what else? Uh, harsh cleaners. Yeah, harsh cleaners. We don't like those. Um, but for and cleaning and charging. The only one that goes in the sun. Oh, thank you for that. So we don't like you to put gemstones in the sun. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because, first of all, you could cause a fire. You could have a fire. And that's happened. <laughs> wow. You could start a fire, which we don't want. And the other thing is that most of the stones can be bleached by the sun. So, you know, when you put it in the sun, the sun is literally pounding on it. It's not giving it any benefit. We also don't really use the moon anymore. The moon, the stones were limping to the full moon to try and get charged. So, you know, it's kind of like the difference between riding on a horse and riding on a jet. You know, uh, this is going to get the job done every single day. And that's really important for your stones so that they can take out the garbage, right? So that they don't get overwhelmed. So we recommend this. You can also use citrine. You can also use kyanite. Okay. Um, I really like this because this is <clears throat> in one of my um, events when I was with the high priest. The guides showed me these arbors on the other side. So that's selenite. This is selenite. Little gems. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so they showed me these arbors. So when we're really sick and we cross over. <laughs> They actually lay us under arbors of selenite on selenite slabs, and that's what returns us to our healthy state, our souls. So, so no ultrasonic. Either. No ultrasonic. Thank you for that. And no so that blue liquid. Yes, the blue liquid. We use that. That is a, that is good. That's organically yours. Yeah. That that's actually made from almonds, and it's very very good for cleaning the metal. And how often? Oh, I would clean, you know, once every, the chains you can clean once a month. Mm -hmm. The stones you can clean as often as you want. It's not going to hurt them. Oh. Um, I clean mine every six months, like I'm, you know. Where do you get the blue liquid? At Southeast. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. It's always yeah. such a pleasure to be with you. And, um, you know, if you have any other questions, if you're coming to see me, just write it down and we'll go through them. If you have any stones that you're not quite sure when to wear them or, you know, the, the sweet spot where they like to hang on your body, bring them in and we can work on that for you. Um, yeah. So this is being recorded, so we're going to post. Jesse, can you tell me about that? Yeah, we're going to post this on Facebook and potentially on our website. Um, so you want to review it and watch it. Yeah, some people like to review it because you can miss some things and you know it's always good. Information is always great. Thank and then you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.